CCNA Security UTM devices. It is one of my favorite topics to every time I show and explain how a UTM device works. It's really awesome that you can buy an all-in-one device that is really easy to set up, manage and has a lot of features. In this lecture I want to show you a UTM device, Cyberom, that is a wireless device as well, something that I bought well, more than a year ago and we'll show you how it works, what, what I set up on it and we'll take it from there. Okay, here you can see that is my rack. UTM uh, Cyberome is over here. Let me grab a pen. It is over here and here. And it is connected to. Just change that one. There are two cables. The red one goes to my ISP and the blue one goes to... No, I'm lying to you. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> the, the blue one goes to my ISP and to be more specific to ASA and the red one goes to, to my LAN local area network. And that's all I have on this, on this device. As you can see, it goes to an ASA firewall and you can say, why, why, why do you have an ASA firewall as well? Well, because I like to have a real device at home and I work with ASAs and that's why I like to have an ASA at home. This guy, Cyberom, is really an IPS device. It's not really a firewall, uh, LAN to one. I'll show you that in a moment. You will see that there is one rule, allow any. Yeah? And there are two, three things that this device is responsible for. So first of all, it is an IPS, intrusion prevention system. Second of all, it is AV, anti-spam, and layer seven, firewall yeah in a way firewall yep all utm features yep then the last thing it is a router okay i mentioned that when when i discussed asa firewalls this guy is running a base license it means that well you cannot root between your vlans that's why i use Cyberom to root between all VLANs. And that's what defines a UTM device, that it is an all-in-one device with a lot of interesting features, features that you can enable. It's IPS, AV, spam protection, uh, layer 7 firewall, layer 8 firewall, router, VLANs, this is wireless as well, not sure if you can see that if I remove it here, that's wireless as well, and I use that as a backup wireless device in my network. Okay, let's connect. You can manage this device using a web interface and you can do some basic show commands from the CLI. When you, when you make a backup, it's not going to create a file like Cisco. It's not running config old text files. No, not really. Uh, it's a pity. Uh, Zyzo that I'm going to show you next is, is better because it is, it is a text file. I, I'm not sure why Cyberom decided not to do that. Well, there was a reason behind. 
What I mean by that is that when you make a backup, there is a file that makes no sense. It's not a text file, it's not a running config that you can take and paste somewhere else. It's a pity. Is it a mistake? Well, you can argue. For me, it doesn't matter. I can manage that from the web interface. Almost all UTM devices will will start with will welcome you, and you will see a dashboard. You can customize all these fields. You can move them around. You can add and remove modules here and things that you want to see. The idea is to give you as much information as possible on one screen. We want to see some graphs, we want to see signatures, we want to see updates, we want to see uh, things that have been detected in the last, I don't know, six months or six days, six hours, it all depends. Unfortunately, I can't scroll it down because there are my, there are some license yeah, there's there there's my license uh, below. That's why I can't scroll down here, and I'm too lazy to use an application and hide it. Uh, I show you that uh, using some options over here later on. We'll start with uh, system and administration. That is a place where you can decide how you want to manage your UTM device. Of course, you can change your port numbers, you can create accounts and decide how you can manage your device. This is a nice screen. I like the way that they designed it. It is pretty easy to decide how you can access your your device and it's pretty easy. You don't need a dedicated access list. You can decide, for instance, please note that there is DMZ and you can't manage that device from from that DMZ, of course, guest is not allowed either. Yeah, I have authentication services because I use that as a proxy server. That's why it is enabled. But of course, I can manage that from LAN and one. One is allowed because it is not my Edge firewall. Okay. Of course, you can change your password. Configuration here again. Thanks. That that's what system is. The system is all about, yeah, what applies to the UTM device itself. Maintenance allows you to make a backup, uh, update your license firmware, and uh, start and stop services, right? And check that all of them are running at the moment. Of course, you could see that on uh, using the dashboard as well. As you can see, I have all services running. Of course, if you if you want to disable a service, you can stop that, or you can just you know leave it up and running. It's not a big issue on that box, and then disable it under your firewall rules. Diagnostics, you can what what is interesting and really good that you can do packet capture, which is really awesome. Not a lot of devices will have a feature like that, and it's really great. You don't need Wireshark and span ports, things like that. You can use a built-in tool and it does work. I have used that a few times. You can capture and of course open it in Wireshark later on if you don't like the screen that uh, information that you can see on the screen. Okay, objects. Again, almost all UTM devices will allow you to do that. You can create well, objects, right? You can create networks, uh, hosts, services. What we mean by services is if there is a protocol that you need and it's not a default one that, for instance, is HTTP or HTTPS, then you should create a dedicated service or service group and use that in a rule, right? Okay. What else? Network, right? That's what is really interesting. It's interfaces or sub interfaces. As I mentioned, I use that device as a router. That's why I have sub interfaces to route between my VLANs. 
let's take a look at guest okay guest that's port a3 i have an ip address dns and there are zones okay that is a very very uh, you can find that on on many utm devices i don't know why cisco decided not to do it that way there are no really zones on asa firewalls not sure why but you can put you know all interfaces uh, in zones and then apply rules to them right that is a really great thing that you can do okay let me check let me show you voice okay and let's look at check dmz zone let me show you how you can add you click you click add vlan then you you go for an interface that you want to use then vlan id ip address and it will create a sub interface right it will put a.3 that is vlan 3 599 don't ask me why it's 99 i have no idea it's just something i decided to use a couple of years ago and it has been like that since this is a wireless utm device that's why i have an access point here i decided to create two ssids one is guest one is uh, local gateway that is your default route and it points to the asa file static routes i don't i don't need any static routes here because i use a default route dhcp and that is i don't know why but on that box you can have a dhcp server or dhcp relay when i click on the relay it will warn you that you can't really use both features i have no idea why it's it's, it's really weird it's not a problem for me i think it might be a problem for some companies that you can't use both N not sure why I appreciate maybe not on the same interface but I don't know well that's the way it is of course it supports dynamic DNS I don't use that feature identity which is really great you can I think I used that yeah I used that for wireless right for guest wireless when I played with authentication firewalls the firewall rules are not designed in a perfect way on that box. What I mean by that is, well, it would be very difficult to manage that box if I had 5,000 rules. Yeah, they are grouped in a weird way and it's not easy to manage them. Let me show you LAN to one, for instance. I have, this one is, that one is my default rule, LAN to one. Of course, I allow everything but what i want to show you is that i apply the following security policies i am going to scan all these things yep ips is disabled because in most cases you want to have ips for traffic coming into your network i'll show you that and that's what i mean it's not easy to find a rule uh, this one and you will see that IPS is enabled here okay that is for NAT I I played with it that's why VNC is is allowed I wanted to play with uh, NAT rules and see how you open a port on that box it's not in use anymore spoof prevention i use that you will see a lot of logs on that cyber room because there is one 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 subnet that uh, has no access to the internet i don't need that but there is a default gateway and that is one of the reasons i enabled ip spoofing to make sure that uh, my firewall will keep dropping these messages dos there is a dedicated section 
for SEN UDP and TCP. I had some problems with one of them. I don't remember which one. I think TCP. Yeah, that, that's why it's disabled. I think I had some problems with it. That's why it's disabled. Okay, and yeah, that's that's what I want to uh, what I wanted to show you now. We will continue in part two.